Today we're going to be reviewing the donning procedures for a custom TLSO. Now this brace is a full profile or full front, meaning that the plastic goes all the way up to the chest area. Some of these will be cut just below the chest and have what we call a sternal shield connected to the front. That's going to be donned a little bit differently, but I'll touch on that in the video. Just so we can get ourselves oriented here, the custom TLSOs come in two parts, a front section and a back section that get connected on the sides with straps. The front section is going to be oriented as the labeling on the brace should state. The front of this brace is here with the top section at this point and the bottom section here. The back should be similarly labeled. It should have either under or over the shoulder straps attached at the top section and then the waist straps attached at the sides and it should be labeled with the back and the top and the bottom. So. The technique we're going to be using to don this brace is going to be the log roll technique. This is for patients that are under strict spinal precautions that need to be lying down when the brace is applied that are not allowed to sit up without the brace on. So you're going to need to have somebody help you apply this brace. It cannot be donned independently. So we're going to apply it to our patient today and she's going to start out log rolling, keeping her hips and her shoulders together and rolling away from me. The landmark we're going to use to make sure we position this brace properly is going to be her waist and that's where these indentations here are going to be applied when we put the brace on. So I'm going to feel on her side for her hips and for her ribs and looking for that soft area in between those two. That's going to be her natural waist and that's going to be where we apply the indentation of the brace. So I'm going to get that lined up in the right spot and then I'm going to tuck the bottom section of the brace underneath her. Now sometimes this is easier said than done, so you have to really push and tuck it under. If you're doing this on a bed, you may want to get the sheets and the blankets out of the way to make sure that that doesn't get stuck when you're trying to tuck the brace underneath. Typically the bottom of the brace should be just above the tailbone and that's how low it should be sitting. I'm also going to take our shoulder strap here and I'm going to make sure that I tuck that underneath the patient's shoulder so I can get to it later. Then I'm going to have her come roll onto her back while I hold the back portion in place. She's going to lay flat. Now I'm going to look at where this is sitting on her and where the other side is sitting. If it's not even, it may be necessary to adjust it to make sure it's equal on both sides. So I still need to pull this a little bit more the other side. So I'm just going to push down on the side closest to me and pull up on the other side to get it equal. Sometimes it may be necessary to have the patient roll a little bit towards you to pull from the other side. In this case, I was able just to push it a little bit since it wasn't too uneven. Now I'm going to take the front portion of the brace. The front portion of the brace has the same notches as the back portion. It's a little bit wider, so it opens up and overlaps on top of the back portion of the brace. So I'm going to open it up and lock those two notches together on the front and the back portion of the brace. Once I get it positioned there, I can undo my strap. I keep these straps velcroed together because it makes it easier. All the straps don't get stuck to one another when I take it off. So I'm going to loop this strap through the metal loop which is on the back portion of the brace and I'm going to go ahead and do the same on the other side. I'm going to tighten the bottom straps first while holding the front portion of the brace in place. And I'm going to pull nice and snug. You can have the patient take a deep breath while you do this to make sure that they can still breathe comfortably, but you want the brace to be as snug as the patient can tolerate. The tighter it is, the more support it's going to give them. I'm doing the bottom straps first because you don't want to do the left and then the right. That may 
get the brace off center. So we're going to do two bottom straps and then the two top straps. Then we're going to come and we're going to find these shoulder straps. This one was right here already. And they're going to get looped through over top of the shoulders here. I'm going to pull this over top of my hand because these straps do not need to be real tight like the abdominal straps do. They can be a little bit looser. If you pull on them too tight, it's going to cause the whole brace to ride up on the patient. And I'm going to come under her left shoulder and find the other strap here and do the same for that strap. Now, if you have a chest piece on this front portion of the brace, that's going to lie right on the sternal bone of the patient. You want it to be at least two to three fingers below what we call the sternal notch, which is the soft part of the neck where the chest bone ends. So you don't want it up too high on them when you're fitting them with this. That can either have over the shoulder straps like we have on this brace that connect to two metal loops on the chest piece over top of the shoulders like this or it can have under the shoulder straps that connect underneath the arms to the back portion of the brace like that. So please note the labeling on your chest piece to make sure you know whether or not you have over the shoulder straps or under the shoulder straps to make sure that you're putting them on properly. Once we have all of our straps in place, then we can have our patient sit up to make sure that once she sits, the brace is still positioned properly. Okay, and everything looks good. So one thing to note is that you want to make sure that this brace doesn't ride up when the patient sits, that they have enough clearance at their thighs and that the brace isn't too high or up into their neck area. Again, it should be right at that sternal notch across their stern sternal bone there. Your practitioner should have provided you with a set of written wear and care instructions. If you no longer have these and would like an extra set, please contact our office. If you're having any additional questions that weren't answered by the videos today, please feel free to contact our office as well, and we're more than happy to set up a Skype appointment with you or get you into one of our multiple office locations to be seen by a certified practitioner.